What happens when you start card making a lot of the times is you learn technique after technique after technique and you're always searching for a new technique to the point where you forgot all the old ones that made card making so much fun. For the past two years, I've explored some of those techniques that I often forget in my craft room. Today, I'm going to be doing it again for the third year in a row, showing some techniques that often get put to the wayside to make room for the new ones, but those techniques are just as good. Now, what's cool going back to visit old techniques is not only are you going to get more use out of your supplies, but those of you who might have started card making in the last few years may not have known these techniques at all because they haven't been popular since, well, ages ago. So let's explore some of these techniques and get some use out of those supplies that might be collecting dust. One of the things that often gets forgot about in my craft room are colored or mixed embossing powders. So I'm going to cover a piece of cardstock filled with embossing ink here, just smushing it into the paper. And I'm going to add one of my favorite embossing powders. This is Skylight from Wow Embossing Powder. As you can see in the embossing powder, there are bits, uh, big white bits, there are turquoise, there's a bit of gold in it. And these larger bits melt differently than the fine embossing powder. This is a mix of different kinds. And when you add it, you're going to get a beautiful coverage. Now I find with these mixes, one of the things that happens is all those bigger bits tend to fall off because they weigh more and they don't quite stick to the embossing ink. And so what I found when it comes to this is what I do is I heat up my background and then I'll pour more embossing powder on top. You can see that by the time I got to the third round, some of those white bits, those glitter bits, they're all sticking on there with no issue. To finish off the card, I am simply going to just die cut this big birthday wishes die on, out of the panel, and then I'll just glue it onto my background. Of course, not forgetting to fill in those bits inside the bees. And when you're done, you have this absolutely gorgeous card, and you could create a second card out of the letters that you cut out too. Now embossing folders have come a long way since the original ones that I would pick up for a few dollars here and there 10 years ago. There's now the 3D embossing folders and they're worth giving out a try. Check out this geometric one. It almost makes my cardstock look shiny and it's so 3D and geometric, I absolutely love it. It makes that white background just a little bit more exciting and you could of course do some ink blending and then run it through your embossing folder for an even cooler look. Now what about combining two pieces of embossed paper together? I decided that a full panel of the ink blending was a little too much for me and the white was a little too plain so I decided to why not use both? I added some glue added this to the front of my card and I absolutely love how that geometric pattern continues off into the border of the card base. How cool does that look? Now let's dive a little bit into the world of mixed media without getting too complex and scary. This weekend I hosted the Eat Sleep Crafty Retreat and this was one of the techniques that was presented. This is such an old technique and I haven't seen anybody do it in so long. I thought, hey, why not show it in this video too? Okay, so what I've done is I have completely ink blended the background of my cardstock using Tattered Rose Distress Oxide ink and I'm blending on watercolor cardstock. I stamped this beautiful butterfly from Catherine Pooler in some black ink and I'm going to go ahead and add another stamp here from Studio Light. The trick is here, I'm going to be using waterproof ink though to ink up my background. When you're done your stamping in your waterproof ink, you might want to hit it with a heat tool to ensure that it is truly dry and heat proof. I added my stencil here and I am pushing embossing ink through the stencil really quite hard. I'm adding the pressure because you really want it to go through the stencil. Next, I'm covering my card in clear embossing powder and I'm melting it with my heat tool. Now we're going to take Distress Oxide and Emboss Resist to a new level. Using milled lavender and old paper, I'm going to now ink blend the background. You'll notice that where my stencil is and the clear embossing powder, it protects that tattered rose behind it. It's not going to allow anything to go through that. My stamping is also waterproof, so this isn't going to affect my stamping at all. I'm now going to make a similar to a watercolor background. I'm going to spray a bunch of water on top of it and let those colors all come together. 
I kind of felt like the colors were a little bit on the blah side, so I decided to go in with my Distress Oxide Squeezed Lemonade Spray because going back in with powder and having to wait for this to dry would just have taken too long. I let my background just dry completely naturally here, and then I'm going to grab a cloth to protect my work surface. I'm going to add a piece of copy paper, add my background in there, and some copy paper on top, so kind of like a sandwich. And then I'm going to go in with my iron and I'm just going to go over it. No steam, no water, nothing, just a hot iron. And you'll notice that the clear embossing powder is now going to come off onto the paper. Why would I get on an iron? Well, what else do I use an iron for in 2021? So you might as well use it. And two, it's going to create that effect of how did you do it? Here's the big reveal. What happens is all of that clear shiny powder has now come off. And it looks like this is one piece of pattern paper that people can't figure out how did you do it. Because that shininess is gone for the emboss resist, for the most part anyway, I'm going to go over it a second time here because there was a spot that I missed. And it just creates this one layer background that is absolutely stunning. Here is a look at that final card. One of the things we definitely forget to do is get out of our comfort zone and create some sort of interactive card. How about a light up card, for example? I created a galaxy background and die cut some of the stars out of it. I added a piece of vellum over top of the stars to make it sort of like a window. And now I'm gonna show you how I create a light up card. Remember Chibitronics in the past where you had to build a circuit? Uh-uh, this is already done for you. You just grab this pear blossom press thing and you slip in the battery. If it doesn't work the way you slip it in, flip it over and it'll work. I always forget which way to flip it. That's all you need to do and then your lights are ready to go. So because this is going to be underneath my galaxy background, I don't care about what this particular part looks like, so I'm just grabbing some scotch tape and taping my lights in the place where I want them to be. Each thing here comes with three lights and one battery and they come in a one pack, three pack, five packs, whatever you like. Once you have your lights in place, all you need to do is add some foam tape around the edges of your card, just so that your card isn't laying on top of this bulk mess here that you've just created. And when you click on your card, it now lights up. To finish up this card, I grabbed the Only in the Darkness Can You See the Stars Martin Luther King Jr. quote and added that to the center of my card on some holographic paper, and it is all finished. I seriously can't stop playing with it. Now that light up card is so much fun. If you're interested in knowing how I turned this into this, then be sure to check out the last techniques I forgot part two to check out that galaxy background. See you there.